Hello and welcome to our webinar. Today we're going to be discussing biosafety cabinet performance envelopes, what they are, what you need to know, and how they affect your cabinet. I'm Dr. Kara Held and I'm the science director here at the Baker Company. So first, what is a performance envelope? The performance envelope is a graph that is used to illustrate the relationship between a biosafety cabinet's airflow velocity setting and its microbiological safety performance level. It includes multiple data points that represent the pass or fail result of the microbiological testing. Also, you can see there's a series of lines on it, and these define the limits or boundaries based on these testing results. We'll get into more details in just a minute. In order to understand where these results and tests come from, we're going to discuss a little bit about NSF ANSI Standard 49. NSF is an internationally recognized organization that compiles regu regulations for many products and processes, as well as acts as an independent testing site to ensure quality. They do a lot of water testing, which is their main product, but they also test a lot of different things like dietary supplements and medical devices. NSF Standard 49 is about biosafety cabinets. Some of the regulations included in NSF Standard 49 are that there's no intake air allowed below 100 feet per minute. Now, in order to understand what an intake air is, we're going to discuss the biosafety cabinet airflow set point. A BSE airflow balance or set point is comprised of two parts. First, you have the intake or room air coming in through the open front sash of the biosafety cabinet. So this would be when you have the sash pulled up to its designated height, such as 8 inches, 10 inches, or 12 inches, and how much air is coming in through there. This is then balanced with the amount of downflow air coming down through the HEPA filter, shown here, and through the diffuser, down into the work area. So you have two insources of air, one through the intake and one through the downflow. These two values or speeds of air make up the airflow set point. So we're going to use those two aspects to build our performance envelope. So first on the y-axis of this graph, we're going to plot our intake velocity. On the x-axis, we'll plot the downflow velocity. Now, for example, a Class 2 A2 biosafety cabinet requires a minimum intake velocity of 100 feet per minute, like we discussed earlier with the NSF Standard 49 regulation. Due to the restrictions of the instrumentation used to measure airflow velocity, it has a variance range of about 5 feet per minute. To ensure that you never go below 100 feet per minute, even due to instrumentation variation, Oftentimes, the nominal set point of the intake velocity will be set at 105 feet per minute. That way, if there's any fluctuation in the instrumentation measurement of your in inflow intake, it will not ever be below 100 feet per minute. So here we have our range of 100 to 110 feet per minute that you would be acceptable with 100 feet per minute being your nominal set point. So the set point will be somewhere along the line here. Now the downflow velocity is not specified in terms of a minimum or maximum like the intake air. And this is dependent uh, on whatever the company decides, whatever works best for their cabinet, for their special specifications. They should let you know what the downflow velocity set point is. So for example, we have it set here at 50 feet per minute. Now at Baker, we have a no minimum philosophy. And what this means is we take the downflow and intake velocity set point. So we have it here at 100 feet per minute and 50 feet per minute. Well, there's a variation of five feet per minute due to the instrumentation that we talked about. So we'll draw a little box here representing those five feet per minute on all sides of the set point where variation could occur. So the set point may be somewhere in this box range. NSF requires that you test 10 feet per minute out from the set point to ensure its safety. So they require that this box here, any set point within this box should be safe, should pass all of the biological testing. 
At Baker, we test to a 15 feet per minute range, so we don't want our cabinet to only function at the required amount. We feel that it should be safe even further beyond that because the things happen to your cabinet. Say there's a, a power outage or a power surge or some paper towels get stuck into the grates or you line the back with tip boxes. Lots of things happen to these cabinets which will change the inflow and the downflow. So we want to make sure that no matter what you do to the cabinet, it should be safe. So how do we deem that the cabinet is safe? So it must pass the biological test that NSF, NSF standard 49 dictates. NSF has three tests that measure it, the biosafety cabinet's biological protection level. First is the personnel protection test. This involves the prevention of aerosols from escaping the work area. So here's a quick picture of the setup of it. We'll discuss more in the next slide. Yeah, there's also the product protection test, which is the prevention of outside contaminants from getting into the work area. The third test is the cross-contamination protection test, which is not shown here. This is the prevention of lateral aerosol migration from within the cabinet. So you'll have a nebulizer inside the cabinet spraying bacterial spores from one side of the cabinet to the other, and then we'll collect the spores on different distances away and see if that any contamination will grow. This ensures that if you're working on one side of your cabinet with something hazardous or potentially contaminating, it will not affect the work done on the other side of the cabinet. So that way you can dictate a clean side of your cabinet and a dirty side, which is always very good practice. So this is the personnel protection setup. As you can see, there is a nebulizer inside the cabinet full of bacterial spores. It's a slurry here. This will fire or aerosolize the liquid and spores and fire them outside the cabinet at a designated rate. Outside the cabinet, we have a series of glass impingers that are pulling a vacuum. The impingers will pull the vacuum, the air that they catch, through a series of liquids shown here at the bottom of the glass tubing. And all, any bacterial spores that may have escaped the cabinet will get caught in this liquid. The liquid is then put onto bacterial auger plates and grown for a series of time to see if any spores have escaped the cabinet. Also outside the cabinet are a series of petri dishes that these uh, actually spin around and they have a little slot on the top so it only collects a small amount at a time. But these will be running the entire length of the test and these ensure that there is no bacterial spores escaping the sides of the cabinet as well as directly in front. To make this even more difficult, there's a metal rod placed across the work of the opening of the cabinet which disrupts the airflow. So we're trying to make this as difficult as possible for any spores to stay in the cabinet. We're trying to make sure to push all boundaries to make sure that something might get out. And if something does get out, it will get caught, captured by these different devices. And that we can see exactly how much contamination is um, happening with each experiment. So this metal rod would actually be depicting a person's arm. We know that these cabinets are not used in isolation. They have things in them. They have people working in them. So these are to try and mimic someone working there without actually spraying someone with bacterial spores. For the product protection test, the nebulizers are moved outside the cabinet and will be firing into the cabinet. So that this should all the air going into the cabinet should get caught by the intake valve, um, grates here and should not reach the work area. But in case some does, we have lined the work area with auger plates, which the lids will be taken off during the duration of the test. And when the nebulizer is spraying, if any bacteria gets into that cabinet, they will be captured in the auger plates. And you will be able to see exactly how much contamination your product is subject to. Again, we have the metal rod. So here's the nebulizer and the plates. And we're getting, we have the metal rod showing um, potential airflow disruption. Now each one of those tests is going to give us a pass or fail result. And the test can be done at the cabinet set point, so 105 feet per minute, 50 feet per minute downflow. Or it can be done at any other set point. So we could do the NSF test where it's 10 feet per minute lower. So it would be 
40 feet per minute downflow and 95 feet per minute intake or greater than that again same idea we test at many different set points and we gather all the data whether it's a pass or a fail and then we can use certain symbols on our performance envelope to show which one it was so we've arbitrarily used the open triangle for a pass personnel protection test the closed triangle for a fail personnel protection test open circle for pass product test closed circle for failed product test the cross indicates the projected cabinet set point so that's 105 feet per minute intake 50 feet per minute downflow and the open squares for a pass cross contamination test of course, a closed square would dictate a, a failed cross-contamination test. So if we go back to that performance envelope that we're building where we show the set point and all of the different ranges that are required for testing, the set point range, the NSF range, and the Baker range, we can then start to plot our test results. So we have our product protection tests, we did a couple here, and our personnel protection tests, we did a couple here. Now as you can see, Four tests is not going to give us a whole lot of information. We perform a lot of tests. And this also shows you where the failed tests are and the past tests are. You can see within the testing ranges that are required, we have all of our past tests here. We also test outside those ranges, just to be sure, just to see how far this cabinet can go. Now we do want to see some fails. We, we actually push the cabinet to make sure that it has pro, um, product protection test fails and personnel protection test fails because at that juxtaposition, juxtaposition of passing and failing we can draw some lines now these lines tell us where the cabinets restrictions are how far out it can go before the cabinet will fail now what these lines are are your performance envelope these show you how far the cabinet is safe. So to summarize here, the envelope area is the area on the graph where the biosafety cabinet passes all of the personnel product and cross-contamination tests. Just above the personnel protection line defines the passing results of the personnel protection test or containment test. To the right of the product protection line defines the passing results for the product protection, protect, protection test. This indicates your performance envelope. So what can your performance envelope tell you? It tells you the cabinet set point. It tells you how many biological tests were run on your cabinet and which ones passed and which ones failed. It also shows the international and company specific settings. And it shows you how far from the setting your cabinet can alter and still keep you or your product safe. So this is important in what we said before, power outages, changes in the exhaust system airflow, or blockages of the internal airflow from tip boxes, paper towels, animal bedding, all sorts of things. So now I hope this answers all your questions that you could ever have about what a performance envelope is and why they're important. I encourage you all to go look at your own cabinets and their performance envelopes and see how they're going to help you. If you have any questions about this, you can feel free to contact us here at Baker, and we'd be happy to discuss this with you. Thanks for listening.